Hey guys, with the news of the Fed dropping the interest rate, I thought it'd be fun to do some mortgage calculations. I just Googled mortgage calculator and this is what came up. It defaulted to a $240,000 loan, 30 year fixed, 6.896 interest rate. And the monthly payment came out to 1,580. How did they figure this out? Before we go any further, I wanna make sure we can trust this calculation. Let's do the math and see if we agree with their work. Here's the formula to find out the monthly mortgage payment given a loan amount, a monthly interest rate, and a number of months. So let's check the calculator. For the loan amount, we have 240,000. For the monthly interest rate, we're gonna take that 6896 and divide it by 12. And the number of months for 30 years is 360 months. And right here, I plugged in all the numbers. 240,000 for the loan amount. For the interest rate, we did all those divided by 12. And then we put the 360s for the number of months. After we plug all this into a calculator, we get 1,579.99825. And rounding this to the nearest cent gives us exactly 1,580. So the calculator must be using this formula and it used it correctly. But how do we know we can trust this formula? This thing looks crazy. Let's see if we can derive this on our own. So the way loans work, we start with the loan amount, the P0. Over the first month, interest is gonna cause the loan amount to grow. We calculate that by multiplying the entire loan amount times the monthly interest rate. And then we're gonna subtract our monthly payment from the total amount, and that'll leave us with P sub one, which is the amount after the first month. For the next month, we're gonna have that P1. It's gonna grow by P1 times the monthly interest rate. Then we're gonna make our monthly payment, and that's gonna give us the loan at time two. And this is gonna to continue. To get the loan at time three, we take the loan at time two. It's gonna grow by the interest rate times the loan amount. We're gonna subtract our monthly payment, and this will give us the loan amount at the end of the third month. And this pattern is gonna continue. So now let's rearrange P1. These two terms have a common factor, P sub zero. Let's factor out that P sub zero. So if we factor P sub zero out of P sub zero, that's gonna leave us with one. And if we factor P sub zero out of P sub zero R, that's gonna leave us with plus R. So we just factored out the P sub zero, and then we're still gonna subtract our monthly payment. We can do the same thing for these two. We'll factor out that common P1 or P2, and on the inside of the parentheses, it's gonna end up being one plus R. And then for both of these, we're gonna subtract the monthly payment. Now we have a slightly different way to look at the balance after each month. Next, our P3 has a P2 in it. I wanna substitute all of this in for the P2. So let's give ourselves some room. Since all of this stuff is equal to P2 in the place of this P2, let's plug in all that stuff. This one plus R is gonna to distribute to both of these terms. So first let's distribute this to the first term. It's gonna be this times one plus R. So it'll be this times one plus R. And then one plus R times one plus R is one plus R squared. And then next let's distribute this to the second term. So that's gonna be negative M times one plus R. And then we can bring down this negative M. Now we have P3 in terms of P1. Well, in the place of this P1, let's plug in this expression for P1. So instead of P1, we're gonna plug in all of this. And then once again, this is gonna to distribute to both of these terms. So let's go to the first term first. For the first one, it's gonna be P sub zero, one plus R times one plus R squared. And then one plus R times one plus R squared is one plus R cubed. And then we can distribute it to the second term. That's gonna be negative M times one plus R squared. And then for the rest of this stuff, let's bring it down. Now we have P sub three in terms of P sub zero, the monthly interest rate and the monthly payments. Looking at this, these last three terms all have a common factor. They all contain a negative M. So let's factor out the negative M. If we factor a negative M out of this first term, it's gonna be positive one plus R squared. And then if we factor a negative M out of the second term, it's gonna be a positive one plus R. And then if we factor a negative M out of this last term, it's gonna be a positive one. So one thing I'm noticing, if we keep going with this, this exponent will always match the number of months, and this exponent will always be one less than the number of months. So we're ready to make the general case for P sub n, where n is any whole number. For this first exponent, that's gonna match the number of months, so this will be n. And then for the other exponent, it's one less, so it's gonna be n minus one. So now we've got a really cool formula in terms of n. Let's clean things up a little bit and move this up here. Now let's focus on this inside here. So this is a sum with n terms being added together, so let's call it S sub n. Let's copy it down here and let's rearrange it into ascending order. And we've got a little bit of room right here, so let's expand this and let's add in one more term. So this will make it a little bit easier to see what the pattern is. To get from the first term to the second term, we're multiplying by one plus r, and that's gonna keep happening. To get to the next term, we're gonna keep multiplying by one plus r. Since it's multiplying, this is a geometric series. We could use this formula right here. 
This is actually kind of fun. I did simplify it using this formula, but I realized the point of this video so far is that we are not trusting this formula. So why are we all of a sudden gonna trust this formula? So I wanna see if we can continue without using this formula. So let's bring this down here and let's make a copy of it. And for this top one, I wanna multiply everything on both sides of the equation by the quantity one plus r. So this is kind of fun. Let's do this one first. One plus r times one plus r is one plus r squared. And then for this term, the one plus r squared times the one plus r, we're gonna increase this two exponent by one to give us one plus r cubed. And the same thing's gonna happen here. When we do this times this, we're gonna increase this exponent by one. So we can just write n minus one plus one. And then we can simplify this. The negative one and the positive one will cancel each other out. Now let's do the first term. Let's scoot this stuff over. And then one times one plus r ends up being just one plus r. And then on the left-hand side, this s sub n is gonna to distribute to both the one and the r. And that'll give us s sub n plus r s sub n. And now everything's simplified. Let's subtract this bottom row from the top row. And the reason we can do that is this s sub n is equal to this. So for this top equation, we're just subtracting the same thing from both sides. It just looks like different things, but they are the same thing since they're equal. So now let's cancel some stuff out. On the left-hand side, this s sub n minus s sub n are gonna cancel each other out. And then this one plus r and this one plus r are gonna cancel each other out. And the one plus r squared and the one plus r squared will also cancel each other out. And that pattern is gonna continue. This one plus r cubed is gonna cancel with the one plus r cubed inside here. And all this stuff inside here will cancel till we get to this point. Now we can't see it right here, but the term before this is a one plus r to the n minus one. So that's gonna cancel with this one plus r to the n minus one. And now that's everything that's gonna cancel. So on the left-hand side, we have r times s sub n minus zero. So that's gonna leave us r times s sub n. And then on the right-hand side, we have one plus r to the n minus one. So that'll leave us with one plus r to the n minus one. And let's take these two terms and write them in ascending order. And then next to solve for s sub n, let's divide both sides by r. On the left-hand side, we're gonna have s sub n. And then on the right-hand side, we have negative one plus the quantity one plus r to the n divided by r. This looks super important. Let's put a box around it and let's get rid of all this stuff. So let's copy this down. And this yellow space is s sub n. We know s sub n is this right here. So now I think we're done with these two things. We have a nice looking formula for the balance after n months. So the next step is we want the balance after n months to be equal to zero. So we're gonna plug in zero for p sub n and then we'll copy down everything else. So now we have all the same variables as this equation. So hopefully if we get m by itself, it will look just like this. Let's scoot this over and let's add m times all this to both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, we have zero plus this, it's just gonna be this. And then on the right-hand side, the negative of this and the positive of this will cancel each other out. And next, I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of this r in the denominator. We can do that by multiplying both sides by r. This r on top and this r on bottom will cancel each other out. And now we're almost done. We have m being multiplied by this. So the way we can get the m all by itself is divide both sides by this. On the left-hand side, this will all become one, so it goes away. And now we're done. We have our monthly payment is equal to all of this. That does match the equation they gave us. Cool, so now I feel like we can trust this formula. Let's put a box around it. How exciting.